Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to find the minimum of average total costs and I'm going to use the strategy of using our derivatives. The first thing we're going to do is find the first derivative of our average total cost function and set that derivative equal to zero. Before I start, I should mention that in another video I do show a different method of finding minimum average total costs. Specifically, we find the minimum by looking at the intersection of marginal and average total costs. Sometimes students specifically want that method, so I'll link to that video below and you can head there if you like. If you are still with me, the main idea behind the strategy of using derivatives is recognizing that the first derivative tells us about the slope of a curve. You can see here that the slope of the average total cost curve is initially negative, it's momentarily stationary, so the slope's equal to zero, and then it comes back around and the slope becomes positive. The minimum point is exactly the point that the slope is equal to zero, so when it's no longer decreasing and not yet increasing. So what we're going to do is we take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So if we had an example where, say, our total cost was equal to 6q squared plus 30q plus 150, well then our average total cost, as I have here, is going to be that function, so total cost divided by q, and this would be equal to 6q plus 30 plus 150 over q. Now I'm actually going to rewrite the function as 6q plus 30 plus 150 times q to the power of negative 1. So this is a perfectly equivalent way of writing the equation, but it's just more useful for me when I'm taking the derivative. So if I take the derivative, I get 6 minus 150 times q to the power of negative 2. Now in a minute I'm going to solve for q, so I'm going to rewrite this again with a positive exponent, uh, and that is 6 minus 150 divided by q uh, squared. So in these steps, I did some moves here where I used some rules of exponents and I also performed some calculus. If this is confusing for you, I'm going to link to a video that I did about rules of exponents and also one that I did about calculus and hopefully that will clear it up for you. So we need to set this first derivative equal to zero. So six minus 150 divided by q squared is equal to zero. And I'll just move the proof up here. It follows that 6 is equal to 150 divided by q squared, and I've just added 150 divided by q squared to both sides. Multiplying out q squared, I get 6 times q squared is equal to 150. Dividing both sides by 6, we get q squared is equal to 25. And we solve for q is equal to 5 by taking the square root that is equal to q is equal to plus or minus 5, but we're only going to take notice of the positive because in economics we only have positive quantities. Now if we drew it out, it would look like this. and We can use the diagram above. That minimum point there is at q is equal to 5. In order to get the level of our average total cost, we can substitute in q is equal to 5 to our average total cost function. We're left with 6 times 5 plus 30, plus 150 over 5, and if you work that out, that's all equal to 90. So that's our level and our quantity. Now sometimes if you do use this method, teachers like you to check what we call the second order condition. Basically the worry is that in setting the derivative equal to zero, we might be isolating a minimum, but we could possibly be isolating a maximum, because at both points the slope is equal to zero. What we need to do is we need to take the second derivative and see what is happening at, in this case, q is equal to 5. Now the second derivative tells us about the slope of the slope. So how our slope is trending, whether it will slope upwards as q increases, in which case we have a minimum, or downwards as q increases, in which case we have a maximum. So we need the second derivative evaluated at q is equal to 5 to be positive. For our example, we find the second derivative by taking the derivative of the first derivative. And if we do that, we get 300q to the power of negative 3, which is equal to 300 divided by q to the power of 3. And here I'm just using the rules of my exponents again and some calculus. Evaluated at q is equal to 5, we get 300 divided by 5 to the power of 3, 
which is 300 divided by 125, which is equal to 2.4. Now this is positive, so we're all good. We have definitely isolated a minimum here in our calculations and not a maximum. And so that's it. I hope that that made sense and that helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are having a lovely day or night.